Welcome to Lesson 15, The Glorified Christ. Last lesson, we learnt about the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples and helped them to build the foundations of the church and prompted them to go to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel to others, like St. Thomas who came to India and was martyred there. Let's begin today's lesson. Jesus, who ascended into heaven, sits in glory at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He is the Lamb who, after gaining victory over sin and death, reigns in heaven as a glorious conqueror. Choirs of angels and saints offer worship constantly before this King of kings and Chief of chiefs. Jesus said, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you may also be. Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, assures us that he will come again to take us to heaven. His holy wish is that we, his disciples, should be where he is. Jesus is coming again to reward each one of us according to our actions. The reward for those who do good is eternal life, and for those who do evil, eternal damnation. When the Son of Man comes with all his angels in all his glory, he will be seated on his glorious throne. All the peoples will be gathered before him. He will make those who were good stand on his right, and those who were evil on his left. To those on his right he will say, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry, and you gave me no food. As you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Whether we are to get the reward or punishment at the last judgment is determined on the basis of brotherly love. The good we do to others will be considered as being done to Jesus, and the evil against others will be considered as evil done to Jesus. It is our deeds that bring us salvation or damnation. The bliss of heaven awaits those who do good, while the torment of eternal fire awaits those who do evil. These sacred words teach us that it is not enough to do evil, but not doing the good that you should do is also punishable. St. John the Apostle says, those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. During the seasons of Elijah, Holy Cross and Moses, we reflect on the glorious second coming of Christ and the victory of the cross. The transfiguration of Jesus reveals to us the spirit of this season. Elijah and Moses are the two prophets who appeared with the glorified Jesus during the transfiguration. Moses represents the law, while Elijah the prophets. What the disciples got on Mount Tabor was a preview of the second coming of Jesus who, with his New Testament of love, completed the Old Testament and who fulfills the prophecies. This season helps us to reflect upon certain realities like the end of the world, death and judgment and to be prepared for the second coming of Christ with a repentant heart. The Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross is the main feast in the season of Elijah the Cross Moses. The Church celebrates this feast on the 14th of September. 
This feast is also associated with the incident where Queen Helena, mother of Emperor Constantine, discovered the cross of Jesus. Since the early times of the church, there was a belief that a glorious cross will be the sign of the Son of Man appearing in heaven on his second coming. Revelations is the last book of the New Testament. The author of this book is St. John the Apostle. This was written while he was on the island of Patmos. This book teaches us that when Christ appears at the end of the world, the evildoers shall be destroyed, while his followers who do good shall enter with him into the new world of glory. The season of dedication of the church, also known as Pallikuda Shakalam, is the last period in our liturgical year. There are four weeks in this period. At the start of this season, we dwell upon Christ offering his bride, the church, to his father after the last judgment. At the end of times, the church, with her children, meets her bridegroom in the bridal chamber of the heavenly Jerusalem. This is a preview of the eternal bliss that awaits us. The sanctuary, or Madbaha, is a symbol of heaven, and the altar stands for the throne of God. On this altar, the Word of God is enthroned, symbolizing Christ the Word, who is seated in glory at the right hand of the Father. When the priest, celebrating the Holy Mass, approaches the altar, he kisses it in the middle, then on the right, and then on the left. By this, he is worshipping the Holy Trinity. Starting with the birth of Jesus and ending in the glory of heaven after the last judgment, the liturgical year reminds us that we, the Christians, have been called to reach heaven through the church. The church is a pilgrim with heaven as destination, and attainment of that goal throughout the liturgical year starts with the season of Annunciation and ends with the season of the dedication of the church. We can achieve this through sanctification, experiencing and participating in the Christ mysteries. Our liturgy also makes the salvific experience accessible to us. The liturgical year helps us to reach the joy of heaven by gaining strength from the Holy Mass and leading a life of selfless love and of sharing. Let us pray. O Jesus, our resurrection and hope, bless us to be at your right side on your second coming. Amen. Let us use this word of God for our guidance from Matthew chapter 25 verse 40. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did it to me. With this in mind, let us make the decision to use every opportunity we get to help others.